All right, we're going to touch on a couple of different things in this video. The first thing I'm going to address is very, very topical. We're talking about why fragrances may not be lasting on you. And this is simply a perception a lot of the time. If you're not smelling it, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not there. You just may not be perceiving it anymore for various reasons. The biggest of which is olfactory fatigue. You have simply overwhelmed your senses. And an easy way to do this is based on how you spray your fragrance. I've talked about spray routine before, but what I like to do typically with a moderately strong fragrance, it doesn't have to be the most powerful, it's not super weak disappearing in 45 minutes, which I don't think is really a thing unless you're dealing with super, super light eau de cologne concentrations. We'll get into concentrations in a second. I do one to two sprays behind each ear, and I'll probably do one behind the neck, and if I have an open collar like this, I'll do one inside each side of the collar on my collar bones. Notice that I'm not spraying on the front of the neck, I'm not necessarily spraying on the front of the chest here. So my fragrance is not necessarily lifting and wafting up, directly up from the front of my body into my nose. That can make you have olfactory fatigue. One other thing I wanna point out, the term anosmia is thrown around quite a bit. Anosmia is very different. Anosmia is actually a developing and more permanent condition. It's something that maybe your grandmother might have after wearing her super strong Guerlain Shalimar fragrance for like 50 years and she sprays it more and more and more and more as she gets older. So by the time she's in her 80s, she might spray it 20 times and that's simply so she can smell it because she has exposed her sensors to it so much that they've essentially overloaded to where she struggles to detect the scent anymore. The mind has kind of numbed itself. The receptors don't really receive that information anymore. That is anosmia. Again, it happens over time. If you are wearing something for the day and then you can't smell it after a while, that's olfactory fatigue which is more of a temporary condition. It will go away after some time and then you'll be back to normal. So keep that in mind. But again, that could be a reason because you're spraying here. Stick to the sides and the back. Again, with an open collar, that's gonna be more inside the shirt. So you will have some wafting here, but it's not direct and it's not constant. It's only maybe every time you move your head, if your collar does happen to open in some way, you'll get some wafts. But I'm not proposing this as an absolute fix but it might at least help, it couldn't hurt. So give it a shot. Now here's the second thing I wanted to address in this video. I want us to entertain this idea for a moment. This is gonna be a little extreme. Fragrance concentration is unrelated to performance. Gonna let that sink in. That might sound ridiculous. Now obviously this is not an absolute, but some of you already know what I'm talking about. Fragrance in regards to concentration is more of a vibe, it's more of its presence in the room. And this is dictated by many other things besides just the concentration, and we will get to that very shortly. Now, what is the possible proof behind this outlandish statement I just made? Fragrance concentration is unrelated to performance. Well, here are some examples. This fragrance I was just holding up here, this is called Sung Home from Alfred Sung. Came out in, the, I think it was 1989, perhaps. Very great, kind of slightly dated, very fresh, aromatic, soapy fragrance that has this almost ambery warmth. This is an eau de toilette, and it is very strong. I get a good eight hours on my skin. I can detect it the whole time. It is surprisingly strong for a fresh, clean eau de toilette fragrance. While we also have this fragrance, a much more expensive scent from the house of Atelier des Ors. This is called Riviera Drive. This is technically an eau de parfum. You can check the stickers on the bottom of a bottle just to see what it is. And technically an eau de parfum is more concentrated, so it should be stronger. But this stuff barely lasts five hours on my skin, barely. So what's going on here? Now, I don't wanna make this video too heavily about concentrations, but just to give some surface level information, eau de toilette, typically means that the fragrance has five to 15% fragrance oils to alcohol by volume. That's a very vague range, but that's what it is. It could be quite small, it could be a little bit higher, but it's still an eau de toilette technically. While eau de parfum is usually between 15 and 20%, so it picks up where EDT leaves off 
and continues up a little higher. Keep in mind that these numbers, these ranges are variable. It really depends on who you're asking. So at best, these two fragrances could be the same concentration. They could technically be 15. This could be 15 at the high side of EDT, well, this could be 15 at the low side of EDP, but they still have such a disparity between them. Now on the flip side, we have this fragrance, this freak of a scent. This is called Dior Sauvage Elixir. They claim this to be a parfum concentrate. I don't know exactly what that means, but I would imagine this is in the parfum or parfum extract or extract the parfum or pure perfume. All of that is synonymous with each other. It's in that category, which is the highest category of concentration, in which case we're talking usually between 20 and 40 percent oils, approaching 50 percent. Now, some fragrances will tell you what the percentage is, but not all. This one does not. This could be beyond at least 30 percent because this stuff is nuclear. If you've tried it, you know what I mean. So this is one of those cases where, yeah, concentration is aligned with performance but there are still some other factors to consider. With all this inconsistency, it's not just the performance, but it's also the ingredients that play a role here. Now, I am not a perfumer, so I have no expertise when it comes to ingredients and how exactly they work together and how they affect the performance of a fragrance. But I think it's safe to say that fragrances that are very diffusive have more diffusive ingredients in them. Diffusive meaning more easily detectable in the air, kind of filling up the air around you much more strongly. And this is regardless of concentration. It's the type of ingredients that are being used. All this to say, don't take concentration at face value. Just because it's a parfum flanker of your favorite eau de toilette or eau de parfum designer fragrance doesn't mean it's going to be a stronger version. You're setting yourself up for disappointment by making that presumption. For example, I'm hearing reports of the brand new Tom Ford Noir Extreme Parfum Flanker, of which they waited many years to release from the original. I'm hearing that it's not really that much stronger than the original EDP. And honestly, that's not really what disappoints me about it. I have yet to smell it, but I also hear the scent isn't all that different, which I care about much more. I'm not really concerned with the performance. When I see Parfum, I see vibe. I see, okay, this is going to behave in a certain way in the room. It's going to be thicker and denser and richer and maybe move slowly and leave a trail, but that doesn't mean it's going to reach out and project like crazy and be detectable by everyone. And that doesn't even necessarily mean it's gonna last a long time. It just means the wearing experience is going to be very particular based on that concentration. Now, even more importantly than all of this is the one variable factor that we have very little control over, and that is extremely volatile from person to person, and that is skin chemistry. For example, while I and many others may only get a few hours out of Riviera Drive, there will always be those people who claim that they get a full day's wearing out of this fragrance. Another case is this fragrance, my fragrance, Brass and Soul. I love this stuff. And I think a lot of you love it too, who tried it. This is technically extra de parfum at 22% concentration. That's pretty high. And it behaves like one on my skin. It does have some very diffusive top notes. So it does project very freshly, very strongly, very sharply at first, but some of the ingredients in the base do allow it to stick around and it stays on my skin and totally transforms for up to 10 to 12 hours maybe. But I was seeing a lot of reports from some of you saying that it barely lasted five or six. So what does that mean? It means your mileage can and will vary. That's why I say don't worry about performance so much. You're setting yourself up for disappointment if you're basing your enjoyment of a fragrance on how strong it is. I know we want our fragrances to last long. I totally get that. But is that more important than what it smells like? We've talked about this before. That's a can of worms that I've already opened. I'm gonna leave it closed for now. Do not buy a fragrance based on someone's recommendation of them saying it's strong. If they say it smells very, very interesting and it smells really great and they love to wear it and they love the experience they have when they wear it, then I think that's worth looking into not just because, well, it lasts 15,000 hours. Anyway, I wanna know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know, let's talk about it, let's have a discussion. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.